Good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Naina Hassanani. I am going to take you through to um, through the presentation. Um, after which, I will then hand over to Jane. Okay. So the title of our present uh, our webinar today is "What Would the Proposed Changes to CPD Mean for You?" Um, just so you can see a visual picture of us. This is us. Hello. Right, I'm just I'm, gonna... I'm going to say hello. I am waving at the screen, which I know is of no benefit. <laughs> hello, Jane. <laughs> All right, so an outline. Um, we're going to go through why do we ask for CPD, a history of CPD development, proposed new changes, consultation and the first trials, the trial expands, and a volunteer's perspective is when I'll be handing over to Jane. So to review... Oops. To review of CPD policy, uh, we had discussions about direction of the CPD policy. Um, this took place at the CPD policy working party, which was set up in 2015. We re reviewed all the evidence and researched what other professions do for their CPD, for their staff groups. Literature review of Dr. Simon Wallace found that some CPD activities undertaken in isolation have a limited effect on improving practitioner competence and performance. CPD activities, which are interactive, encourage reflection on practice, provide opportunity to practice skills, involve multiple exposures, help practitioners identify between current performance and a standard, and are focused on outcomes are the most effective at improving practice and patient health outcomes. Comparison with other professions. Numerous professions questioning whether input schemes are effective at measuring learning move towards an outcome-based approach. Our CPD, our, our LCVS CPD proposal um, split this into three domains, clinical, professional, and leadership and management. Moving our CPD cycle to an outcome-based system of plan, do, record, and reflect. We chose to keep the hour requirement but increase emphasis on the impact of CPD and what this has on an individual. Volunteers. <clears throat> the RCVS Education Department recruited 117 volunteers, of which 60 attended a training day in early 2017 in London. CPD consultation. The consultation involved 3,357 people um, who completed our questionnaire. Responses were received from the ABS, the AVI, BCVA, BSAVA, BVA, BVU, Cat Protection, Dogs Trust, and SPVS. Result of the CPD consultation. There were no major differences in the results between veterinary surgeons and those received from veterinary nurses. A small majority of respondents agreed with each other of the proposed changes to the CPD requirement. Key findings. There were many positive comments about how the proposal will make a positive change for vets and vet nurses in the future with some concerns about additional time needed for recording. There were some concerns about extra paperwork and bureaucracy and the confusion over reflection. Review and feedback. Intentions behind a new system need to be explained in further detail and communi communicated clearly. Definitions of reflection to be clarified and clearly communicated to the profession. The time taken for reflection should be counted as part of CPD. CPD pilot then began. The CPD pilot and the CPD model were split into three domains, clinical, professional, leadership and management, and were intended to encourage a variety of CPD activities. The CPD model. On the screen you'll see a table. A. CPD classification. B principles of professional practice, C, examples of related activities, and D, examples of CPD activities. 
We then split this into the clinical and into the three domains. Clinical. So for the principles of the professional practice, we um, asked that clinical um, CPD untaken was good clinical care and maintenance of good clinical practice. An example of this is clinical knowledge, reasoning skills, uh, reasoning and skill updating. So recording, keeping, audit and use of IT. Examples of CPD activities that may have been undertaken for clinical or CPD courses, example seminars, conferences, online courses, practical workshops, postgraduate studies, example certificates, diploma, masters, degree and directorates, clinical audit and research, journal clubs, visiting centres of excellence, collaborating with specialist colleagues. <coughs> Professional. Principles of professional practice include relationships with clients, working with colleagues, teaching, training and supervising, professional practice and health and well-being. Examples of these activities include communication and interpersonal skills, client communication and management, teaching and mentoring, examinations, appraising of peers, ethic and research, editing and reviewing, work and representative duties with the college, veterinary associations and specialist organisations, work with government, agencies, teamwork and legal work. Examples of these activities, relevant CPD courses, for example, seminars, conferences or online, postgraduate studies, certificates, diplomas, master's degree, and directorates, formal training to teach and educate, formal training as an exam examiner, formal training to support colleagues, training in interpersonal skills, committee work, and IT training. This also includes writing clinical and research papers, preparing grant applications, and making other contributions to the development of the profession. Exam uh, CPD classification, leadership and management. Lead and re responsible positions within the service delivering care. Examples of these activities, work as a clinical lead, governance effectiveness lead, membership of specialist training committees, veterinary association and committees, to name but a few. Examples of these activities, management training, relevant CPD courses, seminar, conferences and online, postgraduate studies, certificates, diplomas, master's degrees and doctorates, college other veterinary association administration meetings including specialist interest groups, professional visits, inspections and examinations. We ask volunteers, does the model help to encourage a range of CPD activities? Are the examples helpful? Are there any other examples we should add? Any other feedback that would help us refine the model? The CPD cycle. On your screens, you'll see the CPD, uh, an example of the CPD cycle of plan, do, record, and reflect. The arrows in the middle all relate to CPD recording. You record at every stage and is shown in the diagram, as you can see. Plan. The first step in, a C in the CPD cycle is to identify your CPD needs using a development plan. The development plan should include learning needs and objectives and any areas of improvement that may have been identified as a result of significant change in last year or feedbacks from colleagues and clients. Plan. CPD plans can be produced at any time of the year and can be added to and updated over time as things change. This is not to say that unplanned CPD cannot or should not be undertaken. Do. Having identified your CPD that best meets your needs, you would then embark upon the planned activity. A range of CPD activity should be encouraged. This includes lectures and courses that can be helpful but do not necessarily have the most impact on your day-to-day -day practice. Record. It is important to keep a record of CPD undertaken, including any form of evidence such as learning materials, notes or certificates. 
An updated and streamlined PDR system could provide a simple way of keeping these records. Reflect. Reflect on the impact of the CPD by considering how it has or will enable you to maintain and develop your skills and the difference that it will make to your practice. The time taken for reflection can be counted as part of your CPD, provided it is properly documented. Reflect. Whilst most recently qualified veterinary surgeons and veterinary nurses will be very familiar with writing reflective notes, this may seem daunting, a daunting task to some members of the profession. We would like to try the following series of headings as part of the pilot. How did this CPD relate to your learning needs and objectives? What did you learn from CPD activity? What difference will this make to your practice? CPD records. You can record your CPD in any format, for example. You can do this via the online PDR and use notes in the section for reflection. CPD record cards and a learning journal can also be filled out. You can also record this in a format with similar headings and that will show the similar information that is required. We ask volunteers for feedback. Feedback on an example, for example, has making a plan had any effect on the type of CPD you choose? chose? How long does it take you to reflect and to record that reflection? Do the headings help you? What type of recording system would help to make recording keeping, an easy as, keeping it as easy as possible? What guidance should we be giving to the profession about using the cycle? Our key findings were, the CPD model needs to tie in with the planning and recording of CPD, include examples to cover vets and vet nurses who are not working in clinical practice. Difficult to plan CPD because the plan was constantly changing. Link the plan with reflection so that the plan is updated after further CPD and reflection is undertaken. Evaluation or review would be better word to use than reflection. More information and guidance to explain the CPD model and especially the plan and reflection parts of the CPD cycle. We were also told that the PDR needs to be updated to fit in with all parts of the CPD proposal. Include a prompt to update plan and recording. Reflection rebranded. Oh, it's the R word again. Oh, don't turn off. I'm thinking we need to rebrand reflection as the word seems to cause such negativity in people. Um, uh, Nyla, yeah. these are actually my slides. So I don't know. I've run over onto yours. Absolutely yeah. fine. I will hand I'll you. Give okay. you a break. Hi everyone. I'm hoping that you can hear me okay. Um, I've got a very fancy headset on. Um, I don't know if many of you would have seen this. I actually wrote a blog for the Vet Times just about what I was doing. So I was one of the volunteers that met up um, pretty much 10 months ago now at the RCVS. And we were split into two days. There wasn't 117 people there on one day we were split into two days so about 50 each and it was really good because it was a really good mix of people some who were very for recording with um outcome base some who you know really were against it or really didn't understand it and felt that part of the process had been that it hadn't been um you know particularly well explained and I think that's something that has come up and I think obviously Niall's already mentioned about could we rebrand this? Because even the students that are coming out now that have had a lot of exposure to reflection are still saying, oh my goodness, not more reflection. And this is what I thought. I think we do need to rebrand this. Just, you know, please don't turn off. Um, because reflection as a word seems to cause such negativity in people. Um, you can see later, I've included permission to post for those of you that um, include links online i've included that to do um and it's still the blog's still there if you google uh, vet times blog and do the vet nurse when it will come up and um, if we could have the next slide please and this is what i thought was we talk about reflection but really we're just looking at the process of reviewing new information and applying it to and i've put your life that's quite dramatic actually to your work life so could we just say that we review and apply or say RNA? Because that's essentially all that we want to do. Um, and so what I did with, yeah, that'd be lovely if we go to the new slide. 
all that I did with when I was recording my CPD experience, I wanted to ask myself essentially two or three questions to get me to think about it because that's me reviewing it and then I can decide how to apply. So I thought when I'm making notes in CPD lectures or when I'm logging it on my PDR and I want to make some notes, I'm going to look at what was totally new information for me in that lecture, either new information that I knew that I'd forgotten or new information that was completely new. And this helps narrow down, I think, sometimes information overload at CPD because even for a brand new nurse or or a brand new vet, it's very unlikely that you will go to a CPD lecture that every statement or every sentence contains 100% new information. You are always working on your current information base. Um, So I make notes of what's new information. Then I look at, would that change anything in my current working practice? So one of the things that I learned last year in CPD is, and you guys probably all know this, but this was quite a revelation to me. You know Hills AD tinned food? So we like to use it with feeding tubes, but actually it's still relatively chunky. And do then we need to mortar it down, but then it's much more volume, particularly for cats to take in and smaller dogs. Well, we don't have to do that because Hills AD is what they call thixotrophic, as in if you stir it with a spoon, it will get more liquefied. So the state it comes out of the tin in is not how it will remain. So you don't need to add water. You can still warm it up, but you can keep basically stirring it until you're happy with the consistency. So that was a revelation, I'm afraid. And so I wrote that down. And that would be good to my change in current practice, because I have been in practices where the protocol was to water down Hills AD by a certain amount each time you used it. So therefore, that would be a change to working practice. So I have reviewed my information and I am going to apply that to practice. Now, my future plan might be, should I go on something else to do with either nutritional calculations? Should I go on something else that um, helps me with what are the best feeding tubes to use? Should I be looking at new CPD? Is Hills AD still the best thing to use? Should I look at some of the other products that have come out? So it opens up a few more options just with, and that's just one aspect of it. Um, if you look at the blog, I've given you the notes that I've made from a lecture. And this is the important thing, I think, about um, reflection is it's entirely individual. So what I got out of that lecture on the Hills AD being thixotrophic is not what you would get out of it, but it's all still relevant. So it's not that you're trying to achieve a standard of, I've made the same notes as someone else. It's that you've achieved an improvement for you. Um, I think if we can go on to the next slide, because before I get on to more about being individual, it's quite important to consider when do you stop? because although we have a reflective cycle and we can keep going, you do need to consider, particularly for clinical learning, where that takes you. And you don't want to get too bogged down with your reflection. And you don't want it to feel that the reflection becomes more important than the CPD because it's it's an equal balance of both of them. So this was something, it was actually something Stephen May brought up in one of the lectures on the day for the pilot going through so let's talk about when to stop for clinical reflection. So the first one would be if specific needs have been met for that individual patient. So you have a patient in with X condition that either isn't something you normally see or there's been a change in medication since last time that was in or there's a new surgery option and you need to go and have a look at these to see what the best decision is. So therefore, you're doing your CPD because you're doing individual research that you can catalogue. I read this journal, I read that textbook. You then need to review what for that patient. If your patient is then going to be treated with you know, this option because that's what's best for the patient, that's what's best for the client, that's what's best financially, yes, it would be interesting to find out more on some other options, but you don't then need to spend a week reading up on the options that you're not going to use. Once you've made your clinical decision, you can move on. And in general, when needs are met for your overall body of knowledge and skills, so wherever you are at that time in terms of practice, if you are in a practice that isn't able to offer, say, radioactive iodine for um, 
hypothyroid cats. It's interesting to have a base knowledge of that, that you could inform a client roughly what occurs for the patient journey. But do you need to know dose rates and, you know, uh, barrier nursing and all the other things that go with it? Actually, at this point, you don't. And whilst that's interesting, it's not a pressing need. So it's to give you an idea of where to stop, really. Um, and I think if we go on to the next slide, and this is back to being about the point, because it's individual to the person, it's individual to the practice you're in or the place that you work, and it doesn't have to be a laborious process. It is just asking yourself serious questions. What's new? What can I do about it? Is there anything I can improve and learn in the future? And that's the same, although I've focused clinically here, that's the same for if you're not in practice. So I locum part-time in practice, but my main role is writing um, an online education. So therefore, at the moment, actually what I'm doing is some CPD based on accessibility of online education. So how do we make our PowerPoints accessible to a reader. So if someone um, is visually impaired, they can get software that will read your PowerPoints to them and will read documents. But if you've put a great big graph in the middle, how does that work? And so I'm actually doing that because I know there's participants that this will be beneficial for. It would actually, it's the sort of thing that actually would be beneficial for everyone because it's like having a beautiful audio book of all your notes. Um, so I'm working towards that. And so therefore at the moment, um, oh, if we can go back a slide. Um, at the moment, that's what I'm doing. And then next time I'm back in practice, probably before I go in, I'll check, you know, what ward I'm going to be in or if I'm going to be in an emergency clinic and then do a bit of reading beforehand. So that's about, it's about just not getting bogged down. And one of the things I was going to say, if you've used the PDR, um, we all had quite a lot of um, suggestions how to make the PDR better which um, I'm sure you probably all have as well but one of them I suggested was could we have somewhere that you can store some documents so not just your CPD certificate that you upload but somewhere that you can store documents because I said what I would like to do is I would like a little I would store a document at just one side of A4 reminding me what questions I want to ask for reflection um, you know, maybe a little bit about reflection just to make me feel comfortable so that each time I go in, I can read it and go, okay, that's what I'm going to do. And then I can copy and paste those questions into my um, notes file on the PDR. So you've probably not necessarily used it much already, but at the bottom of recording, so once you've clicked in your date, where you did it, what it was, etc., there's a notes box at the bottom, and that's purely for you, and it stays there. You can go in and edit it at any point. You can copy and paste from a Word document to it. You can copy and paste from that box out onto a Word document, so it's actually very handy. And so that's why I said, could we have a document where you could put the questions you ask yourself or the triggers that you will have for your own reflection? Because then what I would do is I would copy and paste my questions of what was new, uh, what would I change in practice, and what am I going to do in the future? I would put those in there. Um, and also then it means if I then suddenly went off to do a CPD that was related to another one, I could copy and paste out of those notes into them into the new cpd and say here's the next stage of my reflective cycle because i did this before and now i'm going to go on and do this and then it builds without it being an arduous task for each one and then if we go on to the final slide and this was really lovely so this was a facebook messenger message that i got after my blog came out now this was actually from someone who was on um one of the courses so as part of the pilot and they just said hi jane following your blog the other day now using the comments box of the pdr to write review and action applying good tip so even someone that had been on the course that probably you know had had a good look around the pdr hadn't really thought about using that as a potential option um, so that's there as well. Um, and the final thing before I hand back to Naila is we have been trialling an app as well. Um, and even although I know it's a sort of work in progress and, it's, and it's, they're saying it's quite basic at the moment and it will improve with all the input we give, the app is so handy. Now, I always take an iPad and sit and make notes on that instead of writing in CPD events. But having the phone there is fab because then when you get a spare few minutes, you know how you always have a good idea when you're on the bus or doing something randomly different. You can actually just get that out and you've still got a notes box and you can make a little note. You can fill in all your details. Um, so I think in the future, the app is definitely going to be the way to go. So thank you very much for listening. And I will hand you back to Naila. 
Thank you very much, Jane. That was um, very helpful, and I hope everybody else found that useful as well. If you'd like to get involved with the CPD pilot, then I do encourage you to get in touch with the RCVS. My contact details are up on screen. I'm going to leave it there for a second or so, um, just so you can note it down. Given that, that that is the end of our presentation, we'll be now going on to any questions and answers. Oh, brilliant. Thank you very much to both our speakers for your webinar presentation. Um, it's been really useful for me to see um, all the updates in the pilot scheme and I'm sure people watching have found it very useful as well. Um, just before we go to questions, I'm sure people within the Webinar Vet community know that I love reading feedback um, and I am a big feedback nerd. So if you could spare 30 seconds to complete the feedback survey that should have popped up in a new tab in your browser, we'd be really grateful for that. And I know from reading your feedback that depending on which device you're using to watch the webinar, the survey doesn't always pop up. So if that's the case for you, please feel free to email me using stacy at thewebinarvet.com and I spell Stacey S-T-A-C-E-Y. Um, also, if you're listening to the webinar recording, you can also email me or add your feedback in the comments section on the website. Um, and just before we go to questions, I just wanted to um, let you know that we're teaming up with the RCVS again for the pre-Congress evening for our virtual Congress on Friday the 19th of January. The theme for this year is finding your purpose and passion. So to register for this session, which will be two hours of free CPD, and for more details, the link will be added into the chat box shortly. So we've had some questions submitted. So we've got um, actually a speaker who um, has mentioned that he actually did a reflective practice webinar earlier this year um, for the webinar vet, which is available on our website. So we could um, send out the details for that in an email to everyone um, on reflective practice. Um, so thank you very much, Andy, me, for reminding us of that. Um, I was just wondering, um, our speakers, what are the next steps in um, reviewing the CPD and the pilot scheme? And also we do have Christine Warman, who is the RCVS Director of Education, has joined us um, for questions and answers. Um, so I'm not sure who would be best to answer what's next in the pilot scheme. Okay, I could take that one. Hello, it's Chris Warman. Um, we are, um, as, as Nyla and Jane have said, we are extending the pilot a bit um, at this stage of its development. Um, we had some very positive feedback um, so far from, from those volunteers that have been enormously helpful to us thus far. Um, and some of the worries that people had when we first consulted on this, as Nyla outlined earlier on, that you know it was it was going to be overly bureaucratic, that it would extend the time taken to record and 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 reflect, and and that, that you know that was going to take too much time. Some of those worries, the feedback that we're getting through the pilot is that actually that's not the case, and the sorts of of thing that Jane's been outlining and the kind of, of of notes and things that she's been making are exactly the sorts of things we, we had in, envisaged that are not overly time consuming and indeed are, are helpful and, and helpful to people's learning. But because that feedback that we got was really but from a, a, a relatively small group of people, about 50, 50, between 50 and 60 of the volunteers responded and gave us that feedback. We felt that rather than actually moving ahead with this, we wanted to do a bit more pilot work. And so Nyla's kind of call out to, to, to more people to join us and to give this a go, to, to, to try to make sure that those results are repeated and, and that we're people can be reassured that this isn't going to be overly onerous and also to give us a further chance to refine the PDR and act on some of the suggestions um, as Jane was outlining that um, the, the 
uh, people had uh, come up with during the, the, the work we've done so far and, and to allow further development of the app. Um, we are extending it and so um, we think that that will run probably to summer next year um, and then we'll have another review and see where see where we are and see whether committees um, our committees at the RCBS are um, once we've got all of the feedback do want to go ahead with this so we kind of stress as, as we stressed to the volunteers last year that actually we've made no final decisions on this it, the, the pilot is a is a pilot we are trying it out we want to make sure that it's right for the profession and we we won't make any final decisions until we've got a bit more information so next steps is to extend the pilot involve lots more people hopefully and then um, you know carry on for a bit and see whether the results that we had last summer from the first group are actually sustained thanks Chris um, so a question that we've had in um, is when do the reflective changes officially start but from what you've just said is that um still open to still open okay. to question yeah <laughs> um you know as and as and when and i mean that you know people will know that generally speaking if we do make changes to something there is a transition period so it's not you know it let's say that we did decide that yes we are going to move down this path um and that decision was made say in the summer next year it may be later than that um, then the likelihood is that there would be we would tell people that that was what we're doing and we would outline transition arrangements so people had an opportunity to finish off that CPD year perhaps um, start to make um, sort of reflective notes I'll call them reflective notes although you know Jane's point's a good one we might change that that terminology um, we might make that voluntary in the first instance for example but there would be some sort of transition arrangement if indeed that decision is um, is made and you know we hope that through the pilot work that we'll be able to show that there are real benefits to this that, that this isn't you know as, as we said earlier, as Nyla said earlier, a lot of other professions have moved to outcomes-based CPD systems. And, um, you know, we're doing it as, as, as a result of, of reviewing the evidence base that actually this is what has impact on practice. Great. Thank you, Chris. Um, I think maybe this next question is more directed to Jane. Um, do you have any more information on the app and is it ready to try out? Um, I think we might need to take that one, uh, Jane, if that's okay. Yes, that's fine. So I thought I don't know if, if or when that will be coming. <laughs> no problem. So we're currently in talks with uh, the developers for the app. Um, currently, it is only available on the iPhone. Um, we're seeing how that can be applied to the Android. We're also working with our in-house IT team to try and establish whether a connection can be made between the app and PDR so that they, that they do talk to each other, whereas currently they don't. Um, I'm a bit hesitant to give out details of the app just yet until we have a bit more volunteers on board because we want them to be in constant contact with us to kind of feedback on what's working on the app, what's not, and how to develop this further. And this might be things that we are missing. Um, we are progressing on certain features and um, applying what feedback we've had so far and have actually um, communicated that to them where why they will have worked on that and will be presenting that back to us shortly. Um, Chris, did you want to add anything to that? No, I think that's, I think that is a good summary. That's great. Thank you both. Um, I was just wondering, um, in the app at the moment, has it been discussed um, or maybe it's already a feature to be able to upload um, pictures? Um, so, for example, if I've got a printout of a CPD certificate, instead of having to scan it 
in to get an, an electronic copy, would it be possible to take a picture and then add that picture from my phone straight into the app? Is that something that's already... Yes, that a is a feature and is one that we're still um, working on. Um, it's available. You can take a picture, you can upload it. Um, some people just need maybe a little bit of help on how to do that. Um, we... You can also upload it after you've actually documented your CPD, so it doesn't have to be taken straight away. Um, one person has found a bit of difficulty and there was a problem with the user in particular's profile. But other than that, everybody else has found this quite helpful and useful and is a feature. Great, thank you for clarifying that. Uh, we've just had another question that has come in. What about the app for Windows phones? Again, we're in uh, conversations with the developers. Uh, we do um, realise that it is quite limited just to be available on the iPhone. We're working to see how this can be uh, tried out and applied to all other forms as like Android and Windows Phone. Um, but we ask that this is a, a slow-moving process, uh, but it will be done and completed hopefully over the course of the next couple of months. Brilliant. Thank you very much for your updates and um, it's really exciting to hear what's in the pipeline regarding the app and um, the extension of the pilot scheme. So we haven't had any more questions submitted this afternoon so I'd like to thank our speakers again for their brilliant webinar um, and thank you to everyone who's uh, attended the live webinar today. It's always great to have your company and for providing feedback. Thank you too for um, Chris who joined us at the end of the webinar for the Q&A session and to the RCVS for sponsoring this webinar. We're really grateful for that. And last but not least, thank you to um, Holly for co-hosting with me on the webinar today. And hopefully we'll see you on another webinar soon. And perhaps we'll see you at the Virtual Congress. I've added the link for the RCVS pre-Congress um, registration page and also the reflective practice webinar that we had as well with Andrew and me in the chat box for you to um, use those links if you have interest in those. So I hope everyone enjoys the rest of their day and that you can join us on another webinar soon. Thank you everyone and goodbye. <laughs>